Monster Mash. Monster Mash. Ooh, Halloween is just around the corner two weeks from today. And that means it is time for pumpkin displays and pumpkin carving. Yeah, let's face it though, for most of us, creating amazing pumpkin productions like this this isn't in the cards, but that doesn't stop us from trying to craft those porch presentations. But did you know there is a right and a wrong way to tackle carving this fall gourd? I had no idea. Friend of the show, though, Jerry James Stone is with us this morning to share everything you need to know ahead of the spooky season. Jerry, thanks so much for being with us. Okay, so we've got to start with the first question. When carving a pumpkin, is it better to go with a bigger pumpkin or a smaller one? You know, honestly, the size of the pumpkin isn't going to matter so much. The okay. problem with pumpkins is once you carve them, you have a hollowed out vegetable. And that's really what you're fighting against. You're fighting against the fact that once you cut into any vegetable, whether it's something you're keeping in the fridge or you're putting on your porch, it's immediately going to start to mold. So the size won't matter too much. That's good to know. That actually. is good to yeah, know. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so now, okay, I saw you had the bottom carved out there. Do you go in from the, the, the top or the bottom? I go in from the bottom. So the thing is, is once you carve this pumpkin, especially once it's outdoors, moisture is going to start to build inside the pumpkin. So if you carve it from the top, then that moisture is going to drip down and pull at the bottom of the pumpkin. Oh. And moisture, as you know, from all the storage tips I've given you, is the enemy when it comes to mold, right? So by carving it at the bottom, that moisture can drip down and go outside of the pumpkin. It also makes it really easy to light because you can put the candle right there on the bottom and just light it. And you have your lit pumpkin. And you just, boom, put that part on top. So it's a lot easier to light that way than reaching in with the candle. So it's a twofer. Oh, I, you know what? That just <laughs> solved two pumpkin problems that I've had <laughs> in the past. Uh, and, you know, so this is just like a follow-up on that question. Do you have to keep the bottom part? Like keeping the bottom part intact, will that keep the pumpkin fresher? I mean, it's probably a little bit safer. You probably don't want to put a candle directly on any surface otherwise. So, I mean, I think the... And also having a little bit of a seal will help. But the main thing is like that moisture is going to build. And as it builds inside the pumpkin, you want a place for it to go. Just like in the same way you have, you know, your plants, you have those drip holes in the pots for like the water to go out. Hmm. It's the same sort of thing right there. Oh. Yeah, I wish I had, had these tips earlier because See? Uh, my, pump, I'm glad my, I waited. my pump is already done. Uh, so that, that, I think that's the question many folks have. How do you kind of make it last? You know, that's a great tip of going in from the bottom. But if you're maybe setting it outside and, and a wild creature might eat it, you certainly don't want to right. treat it in a way that could be harmful to the animals. 100%. And, you know, you just mentioned one thing that's really important. Actually, procrastination is one of the best things when it comes to jack o lantern So See? carve it. Up into the last minute, right? You were you're perfect to wait. So <laughs> waiting to the last minute to carve it, it's gonna obviously last longer. What I like to do is I spray the pumpkin after I carve it, I spray the pumpkin with one part vinegar, one part water. And the reason I do that is I spray it and then wipe it down and dry it, because that actually removes any mold spores or any mm. bacteria that's on the pumpkin, which is gonna cause it to mold faster. And then, you know, I will kind of just treat it that way with another little spray once a week, just keeping that pumpkin clean as long as I can. And you're exactly right, Alex. You don't want to use any toxic things. So a lot of times blogs will say, hey, use bleach. Please don't use bleach. You want animals to, you want to be able to compost it. You want animals to be able to eat it after you're done using it. Bleach is toxic to them. So it's better to use vinegar and water. Just on the outside or do you spray it on the inside too? All over, outside okay. and inside. Okay, yeah, good to know. Yeah. Oh, my pumpkin's going to last till Easter. You just <laughs> wait. Uh, okay, so it's not just about the pumpkin carving, but also you got seeds in there that some people yeah. love. So what's the best way right. to deal with those? So the seeds, you know, they're stuck to all the insides of the pumpkin. So what I like to do is I put them in a large bowl of water. It makes it really easy to clean the seeds. The seeds will actually float to the top. And all the pumpkin guts will float to the bottom or sink to the oh. bottom. So it's a really easy way to clean the seeds. And then when you take them out, you just, I take the seeds, I boil them in a little bit of a salted water to kind of get some flavor in there and then dry them out, add whatever seasoning you want and then roast them. And then, yeah, they're absolutely perfect. That salt boil beforehand just kind of gives it that depth of flavor, but it makes it, it's just a really easy way to clean the seeds if you use that water trick. Man, that I'm is just... so glad I waited. I knew procrastination was a good <laughs> the idea. The one this time year. procrastinating works, right? Uh huh. Uh, now, Jerry, the West has dealt with some drought conditions in other areas as right uh, as well this summer. Uh, has that affected the pumpkin crop? I mean, it's, I think it's affecting all crops. We're we're sort of seeing 
just, you know, how climate change and that, those weather patterns are really affecting us. California grows over 50% of the fresh produce for the nation, you know, and so that's a really big hit when we start having severe weather issues. And, you know, we're seeing that water, those water levels go lower and lower, and it's definitely affecting our crops. Mm, yeah, we're looking at uh, the drought monitor, and it, it's yeah. still bad out there. So mm -hmm. great tips, Jerry Jamestone. Always good to have you with us. I'm going to carve a pumpkin like an expert now. <laughs> uh, and you can get more helpful hints throughout the season by subscribing to Jerry's YouTube channel and following him on Twitter at Jerry Jamestone. That is uh, mm -hmm. truly remarkable tips, no doubt about it. Uh, man, I wish I had just a week ago, if I had See? talked to Jerry James, I would have had a, a, a longer-lasting pumpkin.